So excited today to welcome a very special guest that I've been wanting to have on better than before uh, for quite some time. She's an old friend of mine and also a former media person. Uh, that's kind of how we met and connected. Sarah Hill is here and her company is called Story Up. And uh, I'm really, really thrilled to have you on today. Thank you. I'm really thrilled to be here to talk about virtual and augmented reality and geek out about anything you'd want. Yeah, and I want to get to all that. But first, tell me a little bit about Sarah. Like, where did you grow up? I grew up in Canton, Missouri, population of about 1,500 people. Went to school for a little bit at Southwest Missouri State and then um, came to the University of Missouri and graduated from the journalism school in 1993. So that's how I came here. Worked at KFRU and KBIA, KOMU, KRCG TV. Was a news anchor for about 20 years. Went to work for a great company, Veterans United, for about three years. And then three years ago, started my own company, Story Up, which has a product called Helium. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this or not, but you and I were sitting at Panera Bread and you said, I've got some news for you. And I said, what is that? And you said, I've turned in my resignation at the TV station and I'm going to be going to Veterans United uh, to work in marketing. And I said, you know what, Sarah, you're never going to be as happy as you will be as when you start your own company. And you looked at me like I had three heads, like that ain't never going to happen. But I just saw that in you. I saw that entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit and that enthusiasm. And I could just tell that you wanted to have some control over your own destiny. And I'm just so happy that you've been so successful and your company seems to be doing really, really great. Yeah. You know, I was working for a fantastic company and I was really well supported and we stumbled on virtual reality by accident. We were trying to find a solution for a group of these terminally ill and aging World War II veterans who weren't able to physically travel to see the memorial. And I had been working on that as, as a side project, as a passion project, using technology, augmented reality, to try to live stream some tours to these veterans. Well, I don't want to gloss over that. I mean, you were really involved with Honor Flight. Uh, are you still involved with it? I'm involved with their virtual tour program for Honor Flight and uh, myself and, and half a dozen other phenomenal individuals, Mary Paulsell, Steve Paulsell, Sharon Paulsell, Scott Schaefer, Barb Ruggerman, all started that program and they have pioneered and pushed forward still to this day. Um, and I took a bit of a break and come back into the program to lead their virtual tour. For the veterans who aren't able to physically travel, Honor Everywhere is what it's called. And that's the program that I co-chair with Michelle Spry. And for those who don't know, Honor Flight is a program that takes World War II veterans to the memorial in Washington, and it's a plane trip. Right. And how long is it a day or two days? Yeah, they leave really early in the morning and, and come let back really late at night. But sadly, a lot of these men and women, they're 80 and 90 years old. They're too frail to travel and sure. the travel could quite honestly kill them. And so their doctors told them they can't travel or they have some other heart condition. So this is the next best thing. We ship them goggles and they can feel like they're at the memorial and look all the way around. And in the process of doing that at Veterans United, we noticed that VR appeared to be affecting their physiology. They would take off the goggles and they would say, I like how I felt. Can I watch that again? Mm. Or, you know, that was, that was cool. And we would see their bodies relax. They would lift their arms um, when some of their caretakers would tell us, well, you will have to put the goggles on for him because he can't lift his arms. But yet halfway through the experience, you know, this uh, gentleman had his arms above his shoulders trying to reach out for the people that he saw on the screen. Uh -huh. So VR has therapeutic value. And that was how we got into it was doing these hundreds of demos with veterans and really watching how they were feeling the media, not just watching it. And so tell me about some of the feedback you got from them where, I mean, I'm sure they were thrilled because there wasn't any other way that they were going to be able to do this. So what, what were some of the things they told you? Yeah, a lot of them were emotional. A lot of them thought that they never would have had the opportunity to see it. And they were overcome, not just with the experience, but the fact that someone took time out of their day to bring them a special experience that took them back to say goodbye to some of their friends and soldiers, sailors that they had served with. And also the deep appreciation from the family members. We get all kinds of letters from people just really thankful that 
right before their loved one passed away, they had an opportunity to see it. Mm. We have 29 pages of letters from these veterans and veterans' families. We have 50 of them on a waiting list right now who are waiting for us to be able to ship them goggles. We only have six pairs of goggles, so we ship them out as much as we can. Sadly, a lot of these men and women pass away on our waiting list and we're not able to get to them. We had a lady write us a couple months back that her father had the virtual tour and then he passed just the day after he had it. Oh. So these are really timely, important experiences for these men and women at a time in their life that you know could be one of the last moments that sure. they get the opportunity to spend a tender moment with their family. So uh, as you mentioned, the size of the amount of World War II veterans is shrinking. So do you do this for Vietnam? veterans also? Yeah, we have done about four or five uh, different experiences. We've captured the World War II Memorial, the Korean Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, and then the Women's Memorial in Washington, D.C. and in VR. And so any aging veteran that isn't able to travel on an honor flight, and we want to be clear that this is not a replacement for honor flight. The best experience, the real experience is way better than seeing it through a pair of goggles. This is the last resort for people who can't make a flight. And so uh, before we get to helium, so this experience also translates to other things that you're doing uh, in um, countries outside the United States and things of that nature. So talk about that a little. Yeah, Story Up is one part um, brand studio. So we create virtual and augmented reality experiences for brands brand journalism, as you might call it. My background is as a journalist, so we tell a lot of our stories kind of in that style as a journalist might tell them. But we're hired by brands, Google charities, to create these experiences and allow people to step inside these stories in in virtual or in augmented reality as well. And then our product is Helium. These are little meditation mindfulness kits uh, with goggles using virtual and augmented reality and wearables. So a wearable as a brain sensing headband, it's just a little tiny headband that's on your forehead or your heart rate from your watch. We can take the output of your physiology, put it inside the goggles and you can use that feeling to float up the side of a waterfall. You can go deeper into a fractal animation. You can hatch butterflies with your feelings of positivity uh, through augmented reality. So these are all neuro meditative experiences and a different way to meditate than close your eyes and meditate. It's open your eyes, become more self-aware of what your emotions look like displayed on the screen, and then to know that they have power, not only in the virtual world, but then in the real world as well. So so what is possible with this technology? What what are the limitations of it and um cuz cuz I'm thinking and this is going to sound silly, but I'm sitting here thinking who are the people that I really wanted to experience in concert or whatever that I never and one of those people is Elvis, right? Yeah. I always wanted to see Elvis in concert, but the the time that I was old enough to do it and the time that he passed away were just too close and I never got to do that. It, are things like that possible in mm-hmm. VR? Yes. So, and they are working more and more with bringing people back from regular flat video and putting them into immersive environments. So I have no doubt very soon you will be able to sit right next to Elvis while he is giving a concert. You can already sit on Paul McCartney's piano. Oh my gosh. Now you're speaking to and my heart. be inside one of his concerts. They have 360 degree cameras. We use six up to 24 different cameras set up in, in an array and it's VR and AR is kind of difficult to create. Mm -hmm. Early on, there weren't a lot of manuals. We literally were translating from French. For some reason, a lot of the software was (laughs) written in French. But now there's a lot of tutorials, but it's hard to create because it's high resolution files. But one of the challenges is just capture and playback because it's it's, um, incredibly large files. But yes, Elvis, there are all kinds of really phenomenal experiences, not just on, on the Helium app, Helium app, you can go all over the world, Amazon, Congo, Zambia. You can experience some stories about empathy in addition to meditative experiences that are meant to quiet your mind, open your heart. We have an equanimity profile. Helium is combining VR essentially with neurofeedback. So if you're yeah, familiar sure. with neurofeedback, we're not injecting anything to your brain or anything like that. We're just using it as a measurement tool uh-huh. so you can know what your body's doing. 
Well, if I can sit with Paul McCartney at his piano, <laughs> that will do my heart a lot of good. I, I will tell you that right now. I, I, I would sign up for that tomorrow. I, I love that. Yeah, that's on the Jaunt app, J-A-U-N-T. Cool. So now tell me how you're using this in companies. So we use helium um, in companies as an alternative to their break room. So companies are in, encouraged to rethink their break room. It's not just a place where you can go get snacks or eat. You can actually scale up the side of the waterfall with your feelings. You can hatch butterflies from a, a, a chrysalis. You can, you know, escape, and that's what it's meant to be. A lot of companies are using them in their relaxation rooms. Uh, D.C. area hospitals have installed helium bars. Well, these are, you know, banks of goggles where nurses can go and have four minutes of virtual peace to help them fight something that's called compassion fatigue. Mm, and what is that? So compassion fatigue is rampant among caregivers. They never have an opportunity to decompress after they've covered a homicide or after they've had a patient die or something traumatic. There are certain occupations where people are seeing trauma over and over and over again. Journalists um, are some of them. And CEO coaches, <laughs> we, yeah. we suffer from that too. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of stress and stress misplaced as we know, makes people sick. And as a busy journalist, I suffered from that. I covered the aftermath of the, of the tsunami. I was sat by a police scanner for 20 years. You know, think about that. You bet. And that really takes a toll on people. And it took a toll on, on me and my mental health. And it certainly does a lot of other people. And this is not any kind of replacement for psychotropic medication. I want to be clear about that. Sure. This is just a virtual escape, a quick way to downshift your brain when you need some virtual peace. Yeah, the way I've always thought about it in my own case where... I mean, you listen to a lot of problems. You listen to a lot of emotional trauma. You want to be there as a support, you know, and, and you have to, to be a good coach. You have to be a good listener, right? And so all of that takes energy from you because it takes energy to maintain focus. And after you've poured out so much from inside you, you got to put something back, right? And I've always been very careful about what I put back, Um to replenish myself. And but I've I've often thought about what you're talking about, so I'm really interested to hear um, this is a great idea for companies for employees because they're providing them the healthy putback, right? Mm -hmm. the, the healthy helium. filler, yeah, the helium. Um, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. The name of that product was on purpose. It's spelled H E A L I U M helium but putting it back into the individual so that they can rise higher as if a helium obviously lifts a, a balloon. But uh, self-care is really important. And there are a lot of mindfulness and meditation programs and not to detract from this, but this is another tool in your toolkit. If you don't have a long extended period of time, you're not someone who is a close your eyes and meditate kind of person. These are visual experiences. These are guided meditations and it comes with a video curriculum. And about how long is it? So there are a dozen different experiences on the platform. And then every 60 days, a new one is added. They're about four minutes. And that's usually a good enough time. Um, we test all of our experiences with hospital grade EEG to know what are they doing to brainwave patterns? Are they actually quieting them? And you're able to see a difference in those brainwave patterns after about four minutes. And they have a meditation with a guided voice. Some of them are just music. Some of them are nature experiences. And it's a walk in the park for when you can't leave the office right. and, and take a walk in the park. And I can tell you from experience to get a high level executive down to four to seven minutes of quiet time is a major accomplishment. I mean, when they go on vacation, they're really not on vacation. You know what I mean? So I could see where that would be a real benefit um, to them to be able to relax and do the relaxation techniques involved. And as a reminder to breathe, too, it has a lotus flower that opens and closes right in front of you that reminds you the proper breath. And all of these experiences are written with um, my co-founder, Dr. Jeff Tarrant of the Neuromeditation Institute, and he is a counseling psychologist. And so what does this do for you personally? Okay, so you're now a business owner that's providing this service to people. What does that do for Sarah Hill? Well, I created Helium for me, right? I suffered from anxiety and I actually had panic attacks. 
Um, and it's not something that I've talked about a whole heck of a lot. But when you cover trauma, you know, we were in a lot of, you know, foreign countries covering trauma. The tsunami was a, a really massive thing. And we would go into these countries with trauma psychologists, hear all, all of those stories homicides, you know, rapes, murders. Yeah, I had a great feature beat, but, you know, before that, we, we covered a lot of sure. uh, stuff. And so helium, you know, is as much for me to detox and to shift my media diet in a way that is more healthy. Because if we keep putting in all the stuff that's out there, you know, the stuff that you read in your social media feed, oh my, you know, it made me sick. Yeah. Yeah. I've told this story before, but I, I think I just relate it to you real quick. I went to a funeral of a, of a board member of a company that I work with and somebody came up to me at the, uh, at the funeral afterwards. And they said, I just want you to know, I follow you on social media. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And they said, does anything bad ever happen to you? And I said, yeah, sure. But I just don't put it on social media. You know, I just choose not to broadcast that. And I thought that was a major compliment because, as you say, if you're reading your news feed and social media, I mean, people do. They don't have any other outlet sometimes to put that stuff out there. And they're looking for connection and they're looking for empathy and they're looking for people to sympathize with them. And the things that you're talking about is a great way for people to get rid of all that, you know. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah, it's a media detox in a, in a different way. Using media in a different way to get all of those, all that negativity out. And we actually have data to show that increases those feelings of positivity. It's an area of your brain called your gamma asymmetry. And you have more gamma asymmetry after some of these experiences. Yeah, we, we have studied here at our company for years the effects of advertising on people's um, brains and also different kinds of counseling and coaching techniques that people will accept and reject and those kinds of things. So it is real. And when used for proper healthy purposes, it's an awesome science. Now, let me ask you about virtual reality and other applications. Where is it going? Like, where do you see virtual reality in our everyday lives? Um, Do you see that increasing or... um, Mm -hmm. Where do you see that? Yeah, virtual and augmented reality. Uh, The world is no longer flat. It's become a place that you step into. And every single real estate, medicine, education, it's becoming pervasive in all of these areas because you can step inside the story and feel like you're there because it creates a greater sense of empathy and does something to trick your brain into making you feel like it's actually happening either inside these goggles or through augmented reality. And when I say augmented reality, I mean the real world. You see the real world, but there are 3D objects superimposed over the real world, kind of like a hologram in Star Wars Mm -hmm. or via Snapchat. If anybody's familiar with Snapchat, that's augmented reality. And we also work with mixed reality, which is you're able to interact with some of these 3D objects that are out there and helium has it both ways with the goggles and also without the goggles too. Yeah. I was just showing a video to a group here at our office this morning about Amazon's VR. So the shopping experience, Uh honey, we need a new washer and dryer. We'll put the goggles on, you know, or, or the real estate agent calls me and says, we have a couple of houses for you to look at, put the goggles on. Now, the thing I wonder about though, is does that increase our sedentary habits? If, If we are not actually going to these places or we're not actually getting out, I mean, what are the dangers of that, you think? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's, there's, you know, dangers of sedentary habits. However, there is VR exercise programs that are out there. Yeah. You can run along a trail and hop over imaginary obstacles, you know, using augmented reality and, and that kind of thing. They have VR treadmills and there's a phenomenal game called Beat Saber. A guy recently lost bunch of weight like 30 to 50 pounds I think playing it and it's essentially like a guitar hero but in VR and you have these lightsabers and you're playing these games so it's really I guess I could work out with Bruce Lee if I wanted to you You probably could you know or or whatever you know I guess I wasn't thinking about that well it's absolutely awesome so just before we we move on what's something about VR that is a myth that people 
people think but are wrong. They think that it's just roller coasters or horror games. Uh, and a lot of times when we put people in their first virtual reality experience, that's what they're expecting. They're expecting to be scared or you know, put on a roller coaster or something like that. So when we put them in a beautiful, meditative, um, positive, motivational experience, they're, they're quite often surprised. So, you know, that's the myth that, that we want to try to counteract is that it's not all roller coasters and, and horror movies. Mm-hmm. There's and it's not brainwashing. No. Yeah. It's not brainwashing. Yeah. These are guided meditations, much as you would hear an audio guided meditation or, or something like that. It's for people who are visual and they need, you know, a quick reminder, quick fuel, quick helium to lift them up so they're able to go on with the rest of their day. This is absolutely awesome and wonderful. And so I'm so happy you're doing this because you just look really excited when you talk about it. I am excited. We're excited to get in the hands of more people who can use it and educate them more about the power of technology to make them more self-aware of their emotions. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So here's a standard list of closing questions I ask everybody that comes on the show. Best memory that immediately comes to mind for you? That would be um, my marriage. You know, that sounds really cliche I, no, and okay. unoriginal, how did, but... Um, how'd you meet? He lived across the street from me in Canton, Missouri. All right. Yeah, and so um, I can still imagine the uh, look in his eyes from the pastor who was so incredibly nervous when he married us. For some reason, his hands were shaking. Huh. Rob took my hand and, and squeezed it as if to say, it's, you know, it's everything's gonna be good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hometown sweethearts. Yeah. yeah, high school sweethearts. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. Number one hero in your life. Jesus Christ, obviously. Perfect. Top value you subscribe to? Gosh, you just asked me. <laughs> he stum- stumped me because there are so so many of them. Um, and a lot of it has to do with my faith. And we probably don't have time to go into that. But looking out for the, for the least of these. Mm-hmm. Um, most important person in your life? Uh, in my life? Mm-hmm. My God. Good. Your favorite thing in the whole world? My favorite thing in the whole world is my family. What's your favorite food? Cheerios and Diet Pepsi. (laughs) (laughs) Do you like regular or honey oat? Regular. Regular. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Most beautiful place you've ever been to? Um, Harmons, Jamaica. Uh, It was beautiful in a way that it was beautiful for people. We were there on a mission trip with the crossing, beautiful sunrises and people who have hope in their eyes in a place that you might not think that there's hope. Um, if you could describe success in one word, what would it be? Um, fulfillment. How do you want to be remembered? Someone who added value and provided service to other people. Great. What would be some advice you would give a younger Sarah? Don't stress as much. It's all going to be all right. It's all going to be all right and take more time for self-care. Um, what's your favorite sound? Laughter in my house. And the best lesson you've ever learned? Nothing matters if your family is not on board and uh, is a part of your support mechanism. So true. So great to have you here today. Thank you. So tell everybody about how to find out more about you and about your company and where where would they go to find out more? Sure. You can go to tryhelium.com. That's T-R-Y-H-E-A-L. I-U-M, so like heal, try helium.com. And also follow us on our social media site at Sarah Midmo, S-A-R-A-H-M-I-D-M-O. Helium is Helium XR. X stands for Extended Reality, Virtual Augmented Reality. Helium XR on Twitter or uh, Story Up Studios on Twitter. That's the name of our studio. We're also on Facebook as well. And we do a lot of uh, conferences uh, around the world speaking about the power of new technology and the power of helium to make you more self-aware of what your feelings look like. Well, I know you travel a lot and you're really busy and you've got your family and all, and I just appreciate you coming by and spending a few minutes with me. And hopefully you'll come back and tell us about things as you have breakthroughs and as you have, um, you know, advances and, and things like that. I'd really be interested in having you come back and tell us all about it. Yeah, I would love to come back and I, I want to get you a demo. That sounds good. Thanks. Receive weekly coaching tips from Tony Richards, delivered straight to your inbox. 
Whether you're a CEO or an entrepreneur, Tony can help you reach your goals and give you a competitive edge within your industry. Tony's Monday Morning Coaching Memo covers topics ranging from leadership development to teamwork to company culture and more. Text the word leadership to 38470 to sign up for Tony's Monday Morning Coaching Memo or sign up online at clearvisiondevelopment.com.